Strobel's journey through a universe finely tuned for life inevitably led him home to the blue jewel of our solar system, the planet Earth. There he encountered another array of critically balanced conditions essential to human existence. When I was an atheist, I saw planet Earth as being one of probably billions of planets just like it all over the universe. I saw our sun as being an average, undistinguished type of a sun. I figured as I looked up at the stars at night that there must be millions and millions of advanced civilizations out there. I just thought there was an ordinariness to our situation. This line of reasoning was totally consistent with my atheistic worldview. But what I learned later is that it's not consistent with what science is revealing about the Earth. Strobel's investigation caused him to consider the many conditions necessary for a life-sustaining planet. In the process, he was introduced to the science of astrobiology and astronomer Guillermo Gonzalez. I'm an astrobiologist, and what motivates me is just to examine the conditions necessary for life and look elsewhere in the universe and see if those conditions are met anywhere else. And the answer could be yes, and the answer could be no, and either answer is interesting. For more than a decade, Guillermo Gonzalez has researched the characteristics of a planet required to support complex life. Estimates vary, but a current list of these factors would number at least 20 and include an oxygen-rich atmosphere, liquid water and large continental land masses, a home star of the right temperature and mass, an orbital path that is neither too far nor too close to the home star, a moon large enough to stabilize the tilt of the planet's axis and the movement of its tides, a magnetic field strong enough to deflect the sun's radiation, and a position in the relatively narrow habitable region of a spiral galaxy. All these factors have to be met at one place and time in the galaxy if you're going to have a planet as habitable as the Earth, which you need for complex and even technological life. Theorists have attempted to calculate the odds of all the necessary factors for life appearing at the same time on the same planet. A conservative estimate is one chance in 10 to the negative 15th, or one one thousandth of one one trillionth. On those terms, even when compared to the billions of suns and possible planets in our Milky Way galaxy, the probability of even a single habitable world appears unlikely. There are many probabilistic resources in the galaxy, but on the other side of the coin are all these factors that you need. You have to get just right in order to have just one habitable planet like the Earth. And that leads me to conclude that, yes, we're rare in the galaxy. Gonzalez's study of the Earth's habitability led him and colleague Jay Richards to expand the scope of their research. They began to examine how a life-sustaining planet like Earth may also give its human inhabitants access to the mysteries of the universe. I don't think there has ever been a time in the history of the human race in which at least some people haven't contemplated these questions. We ask, why can we see distant galaxies, millions of light years away in the universe? Why can we postulate what's going on inside atoms or inside black holes? Why are we able to discover things about the universe, to answer questions about its age? For most scientific discoveries that we're able to make, these sorts of things can't be explained in terms of the survival of the fittest of our distant ancestors. Not only our ability to do science, uh, but the openness of the natural world to science just completely outstrips the sort of reductionist and Darwinian explanations that we're used to. In response to this evidence, Richards and Gonzalez have argued that our ability to make scientific discoveries is no fluke or accident. Instead, it points to an underlying purpose behind the universe. It is actually designed for discovery. 
Guillermo Gonzalez and I spent several years pursuing a hypothesis that those rare things that life needs in a planetary environment, those things that make a planet habitable, also set up the best set of conditions overall for scientific discovery. There are many examples of this correlation, including our planet's oxygen-rich atmosphere, both a critical requirement for our survival and a transparent window that allows us to explore the distant universe. The Earth's precise distance from the Sun and the size of its moon and home star. These factors not only control our planet's temperature, axial tilt, and the movement of its tides, they also ensure perfect solar eclipses, phenomena that have provided scientists with invaluable data about the composition of stars and the properties of light. And our location in the Milky Way. The Earth is positioned between two spiral arms within a relatively small region where life is possible. As a result, we enjoy an excellent platform for clear, unimpeded views of our galaxy and the rest of the cosmos. I think God intentionally created a habitat for us that allows us to see him through the creation that he has left behind. And this habitat is conducive for us to do scientific research. It didn't have to be that way, but it is. Why? Because I believe that by doing science, we find God. The final leg of Strobel's investigation transported him from the deepest reaches of the cosmos to the microscopic universe of the living cell and the science of biochemistry. There he encountered more challenges to Darwinian evolution and new evidence of design.